Hello, I'm Chris Evans and you join me in my garage. It's a bit of a posh garage, but I promise you it's a garage. There are cars over there and there are cars over there. And there's a desk in the middle and it's quite quiet. This is where I write my books. And this is where I wrote, it's not what you think. And it's where I'm writing, it's not about me, which is the second half of the biography. The reason I started to write book one was because it, it was time and I had the time. I tried before, but it was too angry. It was just me venting my spleen. It was poison. It was, it was boring. It was like, you know, therapy that you don't need to know about. And then I, then I found I had some unexpected weeks and months on, on my hands. And then I got a deal off HarperCollins. And then they said, look, you've signed the deal. If you don't now write the book, we're going to put you in jail. So I thought, oh, well, I'd better get on with it then. I got started with the writing by literally um, putting together a pitch document in the form of a few pages, about 20 pages. So I said to my agent, I said, look, I'm going to write this book. And he said, OK, we'll get you a deal. And he said, to get the deal, you need to write the first two or three chapters, then a synopsis of, the, of what goes on from there. And the first 20 to 30 pages of any book are quite easy to write. So, you know, I thought that's not too difficult. And then I got going. And um, within four days of me finishing what he asked me for, he got a deal off this company called HarperCollins, who now rule my life. <laughs> The best way to get going is, is you turn your computer on and you just, what I always do is I try and put in a comma or a full stop or change a word straight away because you've immediately reconnected with what you're doing with the text and you're off then. And this, this is quite funny because you really do want to write. Everybody who, anybody who writes loves writing, but it, every single day it's like going to the gym or meeting, you know, an ex. You know, you're a bit scared of starting every single day, no matter how much you do. It doesn't get any easier. And, um, but once you get in the groove, you're fine. And in fact, then everything stops. And it's the opposite. You don't want to go and get a cup of tea. You don't want to go and get any food. You don't want anyone to ring. You don't want to turn your phone in. You don't want to go for a wee even. You know, and so once you're into it, it's cool. But it reminds me of when I used to make models as a kid. I made models as a kid all day. And you'd never eat a thing. And you'd be up till midnight making your model. Just wanting to get it finished. The trouble is with the book. It takes a bit longer than a model helicopter. I did expect it to be hard to write a book, and it is hard to write a book. But what's brilliant about it is that when you finish writing it and you read it back, but not immediately it comes out, maybe six months after or a year after, and then you look at a page or a phrase or a paragraph, and it's, you re it's really good. You look at it and you think, this is actually really good. And then you look at all the different stories that are involved in a few pages and all the different facets to your life. And then you respect yourself because you think, geez, that must have taken some writing. But because you piece it together brick by brick, you don't really realise that. And I think that's the, that's, that's the sort of um, calling card for anything that that's, that's, can stand the test of time, whether it's a play or a painting. You know, it's the difference between a sketch and a note as opposed to a painting and a book. Writing a book is different from TV and radio, but it's more similar to TV than it is to radio. In TV, we did write scripts, lots of them. You've got to get them tighter. They take longer than they look like they take. And it's all about economy of words, getting more in for less time and getting all the stuff on screen that you want to get up and none of the fat. Radio is different because I, I don't ad-lib a lot for radio. I write some things. I also read things that other people write. But sometimes you mess that up. Uh, whereas on, on the page, if it's for somebody else to read and you've got time to write it, um, you can say exactly what you want to say. And it's, that's the best thing about writing. You can be more articulate than you can in real life. Mm. I think that's key to it. And I don't believe anybody, even the greatest, most articulate authors, ever spoke as well as they wrote. Mm. Mm. Impossible. There are some contributions in the book. What I thought might be fun at the end of the book as an epilogue would be to invite some of the people who are in the book um, to write a page about their experience of knowing me. And it was a good idea. I, think it's, I still think it's a great idea, but I think we came up with some criticism for it when the book came out because they were too nice about me. Um, because what I did was, when I wrote the book, I didn't put in anyone particularly who I didn't like or I, I had a contraton with or there was any friction with. Cause 
there's enough of a story to tell without that. And also, when you start to relive those moments, the wrong things go down on the page, the story stops and, you know, it's again, again it's about therapy, it's not about storytelling. And so, there were, the people that I invited to write those pages, I got on with quite well. So the, the, the pages came out a little bit too smooth and nice, I suppose. Um, and so I got some criticism saying, why did you get people to write nice things about you? Well, I didn't, but they did. And there you are. Just before I started to write the book, and then whilst I was writing the first bit, I read a lot of other people's books to see whether they're any good or not. Some were, some weren't. Some were brilliant. And my favourite of all was Dawn French's, because it was so honest. And it, it was totally her, and I could hear her saying the words. It was her voice on the page. And also, I like the fact that she'd written it with a different format. She, her, her book is in the form of letters. And I thought, oh, that's good. And she probably wrote quite a lot of letters when she was a child. That's probably what she was like. When I was a kid, I thought about being a DJ. So I thought, I'll put lots of top tens in mine. Not top tens of music, but different top tens of added information that I couldn't fit in the chapters. So there's like over 50 top tens, you know, my top ten favourite this, my top ten favourite that, my top ten worst this, my top ten worst that, which I really like, and that makes the book skip along. And also the chapters, you know, you know how you fall asleep after four or five pages at night? Well, it's a book, it's a book you can read, you know, three, four, five pages, you're gone, you know, and then you can pick it up the next day, it's fine, that's going to work. I like that about my book. So book one finishes with me buying a radio station. I borrow 85 million pounds. I have two million pounds in the bank. They make me put that in the deal, otherwise it's no deal. And with 87 million, I buy what I've always wanted, my own place to broadcast from. And at the end of the first book is the sentence, what could possibly go wrong? Answer, book two, everything. <laughs>